I am uh, pleased to be joined now by uh, one of my favorite people that I got to meet uh, in this business that I do. Um, he joined NFL Network back in 2006. Steve Mariucci, I cannot believe this is the ninth NFL season we've gotten to hang together. Isn't that amazing? Ninth. Nine years. This is the longest I ever held a job, Rich. <laughs> Good to be on with you. I'm not, wor I'm not worthy. This is great to be oh, on man. your Come maiden on. voyage here on yeah. the Rich Eisen Show. Come on, this is great. This is good. Where, where, where I guess, what is that? Marv Levy, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? So that's the way I feel about it. That's right. Um, that's right, so Marv Levy. Earlier we had Jed York on saying that uh, it's categorically untrue that Harbaugh's out at the end of the season, regardless of what's happening. But, you know, you hear the reports of from everybody, <laughs> from Dion and everybody else, that the locker room is in shambles in terms of a relationship with the coach. What did you think when you heard the report that a coach in week four, week four, right before week five, is said to be out no matter what by the end of the year? <clears throat> yeah, I, well, you might hear that with a team that's losing, right? Um, but with a team that has a lot of success in its back pocket for the last three years and looks like it will be right there again, I, I found it surprising um, I, living up here in the Bay Area, I, I hear about it a lot, okay? And I hear whispers, and I, and I hear people that know people that are in the building. And, you know, and, and, I, and I hear some of those things, okay? Let's just face it. I don't know what the, the issue is. All I know is that Jim Harbaugh has been winning there. Um, all I know is his next contract is going to be very hefty, wherever it may be. And, uh, you know, when you ask a Jed York, and I know Jed very well, and he, he does a great job there, by the way. Um, or, I, or John Gruden about the Raiders job or any of these things. You, you, they answer questions. We all have to answer questions really in the here and now. You can't predict what's going to happen in January. You really can't. Because between now and then, a lot of things can transpire. Um, so the, you, you state what you're feeling right now. Like uh, Gruden will say, I'm thinking about Monday Night Football. Uh, I'm not thinking about the Raiders. And Jed will say... He's our coach, and I want to win a Super Bowl. That's the, the obvious answer, but that's how they're feeling right now. Can things change? Of course they can change. Heck, he might sign an extension for all I know, but uh, it's hard to predict the future. You know that, Rich. Yeah, I know, but you, as you point out, it, just in terms of the nuts and bolts of, of, of running a, an operation, it, there's always a day-to-day -day factor to it. And I asked Jed about the relationship between Trent Baalke and Jim Harbaugh, and he called it professional. Now, I always like joking with you, and we have our fun with you, about, you know, you and Matt Millen clearly, as we all know, didn't get along. But what is that like for a head coach to be with a general That's manager? That's not true. That's well, not true. Well, I mean, just in terms of just... Rich? Yeah. The first, like the first training camp, first training camp, Matt Millen and I, heck, we'd share a bottle of Gatorade here during a break. You want this? Yeah, mm -hmm. you drink it. The next, the next year, it was like, I'll get my own bottle, you get that one, you drink that. The next training camp, it was like, Get your own damn Gatorade. I'm not talking to you today. I mean, so sometimes, so sometimes things sure can deteriorate over time, um, but you have to, like Marty Schottenheimer over there in Can or, uh, San Diego when he was 14 and two. There was some friction between he and management, and sometimes those things go kitty wampus. But as you know, you know we and the paparazzi and a lot of fans think that there's no way that a coach can do his job effectively or general manager with that sort of a relationship. What, what is that like if Jim Harbaugh uh, and, and Balky aren't on the same page all the time and Harbaugh needs to get ready for a game? How, how, how does that work from a head coach's perspective, Steve? The only time that it would, well, one time that would be very disruptive, and I went through this in Detroit, where the coaches coach all week and decide who's going to be active and how you're going to play, guys, and you get 46 out of 53. When the general manager comes in and says, I want to see this guy play. You need to have him active. He needs to play, not that guy. Then all of a sudden you have confrontation because that guy that the, the uh, general manager wants, who he drafted, may not fit into your plans. He may not be worth suiting up because he doesn't do anything. And so I don't know that that happens over in San Francisco with Trent Baalke. All I know is Trent baulky has got a very, very talented roster. I mean, maybe the best roster, certainly one of the top two or three in the league. And so they've got to find a way to coexist. Deal with it if you don't love each other, but respect each other's 
position because it's working right now. It's working. Now, if they were, if they were, if they were terrible, if they were sub, you know, if this was in Dallas and they were eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, three years in a row, right. there would have been some changes a long time ago. But what that's you, not the case over What there. do you think Rex is going through in New York right now, Steve? Obviously, in your career, you had a Hall oh. of Famer in Steve Young. We also know in Detroit <laughs> that you had a quarterback situation that wasn't to the, the greatest of, of uh, effects with Joey Harrington. And Rex <laughs> has a guy. He's year to year now on his contract, obviously. He, he wants Geno Smith to work, but he does have Michael yeah. Vick sitting there on the bench. And he says it's still Geno Smith. What do, you, what do you think Rex needs to do? moving forward here Steve yeah I feel bad for Rex Rich because you know a veteran backup quarterback and a lot of teams have that backup veteran guy to to be ready or to mentor the youngster okay and if need be because of an injury or because you know they're like jumper cables you know that living back in the Midwest at some point yeah. jumper cables yeah. you know you, you use them when you have a dead battery and it's nothing's happening so you use the backup as jumper cables boom they get a spark to try to ignite a fire in, with that team and that's what they probably were hoping for with Michael Vick uh, in this game nothing happened he's not he's not the guy that's going to give him a spark that's going to lead them to the playoffs or any of that. It, they know that. Marty Morningwig and Rex know that. So they're, I don't want to say they're stuck with Geno because I like Geno. I, I like some of the things that he did as a rookie. I know he's matured as a guy and he, and he understands defense better. He's just not having the success. He doesn't look very good. And what did he throw for 27 yards? It's and so, it's, yeah, um, it was really brutal. It, yeah, and he was, and he, and he almost looks like he's lost some confidence, and that's that's the thing you worry about when you have just a, a developmental quarterback. You worry that they lose confidence because as soon as they do, if they lose confidence in the, themselves, I promise you, the rest of the team loses confidence in the team's ability to win games. So Rex is in a tough spot; doesn't get any easier. Well, there was uh, the Daily News is reporting that Geno Smith, um, Geno Smith missed. Uh, a team meeting uh, the night before, Steve, or he was late for it. Let's put it this way. He was late for Ooh. it and missed it because Ooh. he got the time wrong and that the Jets felt that it was just an honest mistake, but there were other players wondering mm. what, what was up with that. How do, you handle, how do you handle that? Have you ever had a situation like that as a head coach? <sighs> um, yeah, I had a couple. I had guys, you know. The quarterback, You, you know, there's a lot of deadlines and times. A quarterback? No. Yeah. No. I, 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 quarterbacks are there early. Quarterbacks are the guys that are early and stay late and that they're, you know, really the guys that set the example um, uh, of the team. And, and, you know, you're going to have an honest mistake once in a while. And if it's from a guy who's never been late before, you know, you kind of say, all right, you know, hey, honest mistake, don't worry about it. Um, but if there's a history – of him being the last guy in the meeting room or the last guy to, out to practice, then all of a sudden I could see where a team would go, eh, you know what, this guy's really working the edges. I don't think that's the case with Geno Smith. I think he's one of those early guys. So, you know, I've had, I've had some guys come in late, T.O. I've, I've had to find guys at times, you know. Nobody tries to be late uh, because, you know, nobody likes to get a couple $3,000 out of their paycheck uh, for being late five minutes. But... Uh, that's, that's too bad. I didn't hear that story. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's what's coming out uh, the, the day after. And uh, Rex says that it's going to be it's mm. going to be Gino to go uh, <clears throat> next week against Denver too. Holy smokes! I mean, it is. It, we got one minute to go, Steve. Before I got this hard out, D is Denver the best team? Seattle the best team? Who's the best team that you've seen through the first four <clears throat> plus weeks? You, well, you know what? You know what? If we had a, like a BCS kind of committee yes. for the playoffs with Condoleezza Rice and Archie Manning <laughs> and you know all those. The f I think I think we would have four teams from the West. Yeah, four teams from the West that would be in the playoffs. It would be Denver, like you mentioned. It would be Seattle, certainly. It would be the 49ers. Wait till they get everybody back. That's a scary team. And it would be the San Diego Chargers. All these four teams yes. right now. I'm sorry about that, East Coasters. These teams in the West right now are dynamite, and they might be the best teams. And Denver looks like it's... Uh, 
it's going to be a scary team. Yeah, going forward. I think San Diego. We, it's time we start talking about uh, about it as a, a Super Bowl contender, and we'll talk about that on our next segment on the Rich Eisen Show. Thanks, Mooch. Appreciate you firing up Mooch Camp for us.